What's going on, y'all? It's Canna Sam. Had a blast with my man, Drow TV. Can't wait to see what holds the future. Make sure you tune in to Drow TV. We had a complete blast, and we definitely got toasted. Welcome to My First Time, the show about your first time getting high on marijuana. I'm your host, Mike Freeman with Drow TV. Today, I'd like to welcome our guest, Canna Sam. What's happening, my friend? What's going on, Mike? I appreciate you having me, my man. <clears throat> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you can find more of Canna Sam on Instagram, Snapchat at Canna Sam 65. So, dude, uh, let everybody know where you're located and a little bit about what you got going on in the cannabis community. Uh, so, I am located in uh, Brevard County, Florida, Melbourne area. And uh, basically, man, I'm just a kid who fell in love with the plant. Uh, in college, you know, uh, this is this is my go-to. Uh, it helped me study. It helped me. It helped me get through my day. Uh, I was actually in school to be an RN, uh, <clears throat> but there was something about this plant that I felt like if it can help me, then why can it help myself and I help others? Uh, so. Right now, man, I'm just I'm just experimenting with uh, some confectionery. Uh, I do want to open a bakery, and I want to become one of the uh, the first, um, I guess you could say, uh, cannabis bakeries in Brevard County. Um, so that's my plan. I mean, obviously, we do have to wait till legalization happens. Um, but yeah, that's that's really me. I'm all about everything cannabis. My story is short but sweet. Um, <clears throat> no worries. I use this, uh, especially for, for medical purposes. Uh, I, I had a time in my life where I was unsure, um, if I necessarily wanted to be here anymore. And, uh, this, this plant, it, uh, it helped pull me out of that, that bottom. And I want to be able to, to share my experience with other people who might feel like, you know, I might not have what it takes to live this life anymore, or I might not be enough or the stresses of work and school and you feel like it's not enough, but dude, you just got to sit down and just smoke this plant and everything will just go away. I promise you. <laughs> nice. Well, I certainly like that mindset. Uh, what you're smoking on, Sam? What do you got spun up there? So this, uh, this strain is Daisy Delight. Okay. And it's from a dispensary, uh, True Leaf. They, they, they get a lot of slack. If, if you heard about them, they get a lot of slack for some of their products, but uh, the location that I have here, dude, they're perfect and I have nothing to complain about, dude. Nice. And it's Daisy Deluxe? Daisy Delight. Daisy Delight. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, Sam, uh, the show is my first time. So, Please enlighten us to the first time you got stoned. Well, man, uh, I, for starters, uh, a lot of people, they say the, the, the word cannabis influencer, they might take it a certain way. They might take it as you influencing people to smoke. And I don't, I don't think that is what's, what's it about, what's it all about. <clears throat> so I'm not influencing anybody to smoke at a young age because I did, unfortunately. I, do I regret it? absolutely not dude it was the best day of my life <laughs> but uh so I was I was 12 years old and uh we had a painter who lived on the corner and he was smoking I thought he was smoking chain smoking cigarettes all day but he was chain smoking joints all day nice and my my brother knew this uh my brother was 18 and 17 18 at the time he was like bro I know what he's doing I've got a few of them they're really good you want to try some and me looking up to my older brother, I'm just like, absolutely. Like, I don't know what this weed thing is. Give it to me. Let's do it together. And, uh, dude, when I say there was something about that gassy, that earthy, that hit, that, that first hit, when I say it hit my whole body from head to toe, whew, I mean, there's nothing like, some people say they don't get high the first time. And that's okay. But I want to say the first time that I, my, my first time was the best time. I mean, so after that, man, we went to the pool. For some reason, my, my lung capacity was unbelievable because I was under the water swimming and, and doing cartwheels and 
going ridiculous. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're the only people at the pool and I'm just loud having a good old time. And nobody would have thought anything differently of it because you're 12, I was a 12 year old kid sure. had all this energy. There's no difference. And man, I mean, it was, it was quite the time. And, and that same night, uh, I, at 12 years old, learned out what a female orgasm was. Okay. <laughs> because uh, I was my brother's lookout man. Okay. For his, his activities with his lady friend. And uh, he explained it to me as her being high. Okay. So I can never forget my first time. Also with, you know, another first time if you catch my drift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a uh, all around general learning experience on that day, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't need health class, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it only gets awkward in health class. Um, yeah. <laughs> so talk a little bit about your journey with cannabis. Uh, I mean, 12 years old, I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think you started a heavy everyday consumption at that point, did you? No, um, so it was it was kind of on and off, really. I mean, I really didn't start uh, start smoking cannabis every day. <clears throat> I want to say about until uh, my sophomore year of high school, so about sixteen. Okay. Um, I was playing football, and uh, our football team sucked, man. I mean, we sucked. We didn't win a game, dude. We were losing. But the only thing, the only, my thing about football was I would go to practice. I would enjoy it. I had my friends. But, dude, we would smoke weed before the games and after the games. And we had we had this group of friends. I still talk to them to this day. Um, and uh, football kind of brought the plant together and my friends together because we all had this hobby that we shared. And so I really, I really just smoked weed at that time just to get high. You know, just just to say I smoked weed. Um, and then around 2018, my uh, my best friend, unfortunately, passed away due to suicide. And uh, I was still in high school at the time. And around that time, uh, fake pressed pills were at their peak. So unfortunately, I went down that road and that became my main consumption. I, I gave up everything else i didn't smoke weed anymore i said fuck that and i started consuming these pills every day man and oh my god it's don't do it i don't recommend it it is the worst thing you can ever do to your body and your life i mean it was oblivious to me but how people were looking at me i was i was just seeing as myself being high and being happy but dude I've seen some of the videos of myself just drooling and just being just a I, I call it a demon because you're not even yourself at that point, man. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. So uh anyways, I go to uh I go to a, a Christian college and um I started smoking weed again every heavily, as I said, for my classes and my studies. And because I was at that college, it was I mean you know, some, how some, some people view it, especially religious people, they, they view it as a sin and this and that. So unfortunately, because they knew that I did it, I was looked at a certain way. And I didn't, I didn't like that at all. I mean, you know, you're trying to study, you're trying to do this and that. I mean, I was trying to play football at the same time. And uh, you have all this pressure on you. And that just made it a lot worse. Um, and fortunately, uh, my support system, my mom, she kind of just told me just basically fuck what they say. Like, if you're being smart with what you're doing and you're being smart with your cannabis use and you're not like, you know, you're not being an idiot with it, then, you know, there's nothing you can do. I mean, um, <clears throat> my, my, uh, my, my, my grandmother, she used to, uh, she used to uh, smuggle some some weed on the corner for my uh for my great aunt who had cancer okay um so so, so my family they they look at at can i mean it was that was long long time ago but they they look at uh they look at cannabis as one of those things that it 
they they st- some of them still look at it a little different, a little weird. But uh, my mom, my grandmother do. They're like, if you're gonna do it, do it and fuck what anybody else has to say. You know what I mean? Because we've seen the properties of the Haas, the helping, you know, the healing, expect not not even you know mental health and just daily living, but just cancer wise. I mean, they've seen it firsthand. You know what I mean? So, I really didn't start um, start diving in and start actually using cannabis until about yeah about 28 summer of 2018 2019 i mean i'd used it you know on and off for years but i i really it became my one and only thing and ever since then i haven't looked back man. it's 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 been my thing you know nice um so let's talk about uh fat bastard confections you mentioned you want to oh. open a bakery uh yeah you You've got some sharp culinary skills, or are you uh, YouTube University figuring out as you go? <laughs> um, so it's 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 uh, honestly to be honest with you, man, it's a mix of both. Um, for for the YouTube wise, I'm I'm kind of I'm still figuring. It. There's like certain uh, certain things that I want to infuse, but I feel like it's so hard. And then you go on YouTube and you look at like a 15, 20 minute video, and you're like. It's not that hard, man. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's that simple. Um, but it's not just only me. It's uh, it's actually my mom. Okay. Uh, it's 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 me and my mom th- mom's thing. Um, we my my little brother he got the idea of fat bastard from uh, from Austin Powers. Yeah. Uh, and that's classic film, man. Especially when you're stoned, it doesn't get any better than that. But um. So one day he was just, he just did the impression of Fat Bastard and we just rolled with it. Next thing I know, uh, he, he, he actually has his, his design company called Fat Bastard Designs. He freehand designs pictures. I mean, you could literally send a picture of you, dude, and he could draw like a goofy version of you and like in 10, 15 minutes and like something, you know, something you see at the mall, Sure. but way better. I mean, out of this world. So we were like, you know, why don't we just string off of that and create Fat Bastard Confections? And uh, man, we've we've been we've been doing it for about a year now, and like anything business wise, man, it's a struggle because you, you got your ups and downs. I mean, you have. You have people who you think you're, you would expect to support and expect to help. And then you have other people who you don't expect and they surpass, you know, everything. But yeah, so Fat Bass Confections. Sorry to get off the little tangent. It's, it's my first smoke of the day, man. It's No worries. Whew, I've had, I, I, it's, it's been a, quite a couple of days running trying to get this going. So I, I do appreciate your patience. I do want to say thank you for having me on here, man. It's truly a blessing. That's um, all good. The fast, fat bastard confections. Uh, like I said, this plan has helped me, and uh, I feel like with a lot of people, they don't want to smoke cannabis. Uh, they'd rather eat it because one, it's it's one thing, it's something that is discreet, and they won't get judged for, they won't get viewed. Um, so our main audience, um, it would, it would be easy to say that I would just make this so i could get my friends high that's no uh that's not it at all we're we're actually directed towards um older people with arthritis uh fibromyalgia uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh joint pain anything bodily mentally and physically for older people uh for for kids as well with the uh for for some kids with autism and the um the sensory overload I feel like um, a really, really high CBD with a low THC is perfect for them because it gives them that balance and they don't get high. It's it, The one thing that I want people to understand is at the end of the day, it's not about, I mean, sure, the high is a plus, but it's, that's not what it's all about. You know what I mean? It's not all about getting baked off your ass and not being able to move, not being able to function. I mean, we have, we have lives, we have things to do especially for a child, you don't want to, you don't want to put a kid through that. Sure. Um, so for, for kids with autism and sensory overload um, and, and veterans as well, um, 
you know, for PTSD and uh, also just people with mental health issues. Um, I myself, you know, I, I, I've been struggling with mental health for a couple of years, but if it wasn't for this plant, man, I, I don't think I would have been able to do it. Um, I mean, going down that, going down that path of using the, using those fake pills. Um, I mean, it's, I say fake pills because I, I doubt that a single one that I was getting was legit. Um, and, and I'm thankful that I'm still alive. Um, especially with all the, all that, that known stuff that's going around and, sure. um, but yeah, so fat, fat bastard is really just for the people. Um, and it's, it's going to be all about helping people. I mean, we're uh, one side, you know, you'll have your regular foods, your regular cakes and desserts and, and things that you, you know, you can eat, you know, so if there's someone who, who doesn't want to um, experience the medical side, they can also experience the regular bakery side, you know, so no one's going to lose out in that, uh, in that aspect. No doubt. That's great. Love the message. Uh, so you recently started a podcast as well that the second episode came out today it did it did so it's it's our first uh official full-length episode but it's, okay. it's the second full episode yes so the podcast is called uh the can of sam show and it is uh it's a, a podcast with me and my sober best friend uncle mentor uh okay. cody um and we have wanted to do it for quite some time and um you know, I was just like, you know, man, let's get the equipment. Let's get it rolling. You know, I'll come home, come home for a weekend. Because uh, he does live a little bit, a little farther than me. So it is, it is quite a commute, um, but we make it work. Um, I was like, you know, let me come home. Let's get it done. And man, it's, it's going to be really interesting because um, Cody, he was my football coach in high school. Which is even more ironic because he knew that I was smoking the entire time, but he didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it, it's it, it's funny though because um, he's come a long way with 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 cannabis. I mean, he's definitely intrigued, um, and he is involved with the the fat bastard confectionery as well. Um, so it's it's definitely going to be a good time because. We're going to talk about some some things I don't think he's ready for, especially with like some of the gadgets that I want to talk about that, you know, like for dabbing and so on and so forth. I mean, I just told him on this past episode what a, what a gravity bomb was. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, man. So he consumes flour or cannabis in general? No, he doesn't oh. at all. Okay. Oh, you said so. so. He does, okay. You said, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he, okay. does, he doesn't consume it at all. Um, but he's, he's intrigued and, and, um, he's, he's actually allergic to the, the smoke, okay. which is weird because he can breathe it in, but he can't, um, he can't in like actually, right. um, so what was his reaction to, uh, the gravity bomb seeing that for the first time? Oh, he was definitely, he, he was, he was like, so you do you use like a five gallon bucket and I'm like, you can, I mean, I know you've seen some of them. Like people doing them in pools and yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he was he was definitely surprised. He was like, and and another thing, I I, I exposed myself and I said that uh that I used all my dad's two millimeter sockets because because I did. And he was like, well, that's why those motherfuckers were missing every time I would go to use them. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly why I was using them all. <laughs> Man, we used to where we lit. I grew up in Massachusetts and. uh they, Ooh, I, they, I figured dude, you got that accent. Yeah, I'm trying to get rid of it, but uh, <laughs> the, the, all, the company that produced all the soda where we were from, um, they made three liter bottles of soda. And so we would we would sometimes just go and this was bad. It was like seventy nine ninety nine cents for a three liter. But um, I mean, it's 20 something years ago. So we would just buy one, dump it out, cut it. And yeah, like in the kitchen sink, would fill up the kitchen sink and do gravity bong rips and make oh, a mess. Geez. Make a friggin' oh. mess, but especially in the sink. That's it. All it take, all it took was one of those, and lights out. You're you're ready to go. You know. Oh, 
beautiful. And see, the thing I love about a gravity bar, man, you just need just a little bit, just a little bit. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the bongs, they, I'm, I'm a joint guy. Uh, I mostly smoke joints, but every now and then I'll hit the bong and, uh, man, it just, it hits different. It's for some reason, it's almost harsher on my throat, but, um, yeah. You know, considering you're smoking paper and, you know, a whole joint, yeah. is like two gold <laughs> packs, you know what I mean? You'd think it would literally be worse than, a couple rips out of a bong, but. Well, but see, I'm, hey, the, I'm the complete opposite, actually. I'm more of a, I'm more of a bong guy. Okay. It's, 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 it's very rare that I actually, uh, actually roll up a joint. I mean, I roll up, you know, maybe like two or three joints a week, maybe. Okay. I, I'm more of a, more of a bong guy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, hopefully I'll grow out of that as I get older. I mean, I don't want to be that, that 65 year old man hitting the bong, but I mean, if I am talking, why not? You know, <laughs> you know, got to got consume however we got to consume, you know, that's it. So, but I definitely, I definitely agree with you that bong, it, 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 there's something about it, man. It just hits you instantly. And, and what I love about it is uh, it helps you conserve, conserve a lot of your flour. You don't have to use as much as, you know, there's some people, they think they got to roll up a, an eighth and a wood. And it's just like, buddy, you don't need to, man. You don't, if you really need to, you need, you need to check with your weed guy, wherever you're getting your, your cannabis from, because it might not be the best. Or your tolerance is just extremely high. And that's a problem. Yeah, you know? yeah. But, yeah, I, I like to roll up a fat joint. I usually smoke half of it and then ash it, put it out. Oh, yeah. to, and then the next day I've got, I got one ready to go. So for me, it's, it's like convenience. I spin them up quick. I mean, the bowl, I'm looking at the bowls. I could still see half of it packed now, but actually <laughs> still, still water in it too. That's not good. But um, yeah, we got some yeah. fungus. Last time I did bong rips in the afternoon and I usually don't smoke until at night because it just slows me down sometimes. So uh Hey everybody, I want to quickly mention Food Forest Abundance. Food Forest Abundance is a great way to create your own self-sustaining food forest and naturally occurring ecosystem that's commonly found in nature, but designed specifically for you. Through multiple layers of trees, shrubs, herbs, vines, rhizomes, mushrooms, and perennial vegetables, you can become your own supply chain without the typical maintenance required of a garden. From small spaces to large areas, both urban and suburban, Food Forest Abundance wants us to get back to our roots in nature by engaging with our food production in a meaningful way. For more information, click on the link in the description below and start your journey today. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. I did bong rips in the afternoon and it was like, forget it. You got to take a nap, chill out for a little bit. Like, yeah. I, was trying to, I was trying to do stuff. I just, no focus. And, uh, which usually it, it gets me focused, but like during the day I'm highly productive. So I I've got a list of things to accomplish and I'm doing all of them. And sometimes I can smoke. And if it's something where it's like laid back and easy to do, but uh, this was not one of those days and it definitely ruined my afternoon. So it reminded uh, me why I just chill out and smoke at night, but. Oh yeah. I definitely, I definitely have some days like that. I mean, you for me, I definitely underestimate how much is in that bowl. Uh, and when I when I take a bowl, I finish the whole thing. I, I snap it through, and uh, sometimes I put way more than I think I did. And man, I'm in for a good time, but I'm in for uh, for a long time, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Sam, uh, it's been awesome speaking with you, dude. Um, glad we had a chance to Likewise. meet. We're, we're here in Orlando, so uh, if you're at okay. any events out this way, definitely give us a heads up. Uh, oh, absolutely. The same if we're out in the Melbourne area. We're going to be at uh, Canna Fest in Mount Dora in November. I saw. I saw. Um, so we're going to be set up there doing interviews and stuff. So if you happen to make it out, definitely stop by the booth. And, absolutely. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, thanks again for coming on the show. Let everybody know the best place they can find you. Uh, so the best place you can find me, you can find me on Instagram uh, at CannaSam65. And you can find me on Insta, uh, Snapchat rather at the joints hitting brother. <laughs> you can find me on Snapchat at Canna Sam sixty five. 
I'm slowly switching over more and more to Instagram uh, as we're growing and we're growing. Dude, get get me to 420 because when we when we get to 420 followers, we're taking a gram dab and we're taking a gram bong rip. So if you want to see me get really fucked up, possibly cough along out, maybe throw up, help get me there, man. Nice. Love it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go down there and smash the like button for my man, Sam, and subscribe to Dro TV so that you don't miss more great interviews like this one. And that's it for today. Can of Sam, thanks again, my friend. And for everybody tuned in, smoke them if you got them. What's up, Dro TV family? You can now stream the audio version of all these episodes on your favorite podcast player. And if you like more episodes like this, check out this playlist we put together over here for you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. You don't want to miss more great content from Dro TV. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, smoke them if you got them.